The Force is with you, young Skywalker. You are not a Jedi yet. Hello, I am JX Editor. For those of you who don't know, in my upcoming Skywalker edit, the Bespin duel has been moved to the cave vision on Dagobah as a way of abbreviating the story. And I'm actually going to show you three things today. Two of them are ways that I achieved this effect, because I did a different way for each blade. And the other one is going to be this clash lock effect that you see in uh, episode three, and I think it's in episode one and two. So I'm going to start with this shot, uh, because it's a pretty simple shot, and it uses all three of the effects I'm going to be showing you. So, to start with, for black and white, I like to use tint, which it can be found under color correction. Almost dropped my microphone. If you absolutely refuse to use tint, you can go to image control, black and white, and it'll just have the same thing. And the whole point for the blue blade is to cut into it. On tint, you click this four point, create four point polygon mask, which is this rectangle shape right here. And when you click that, it creates this box in which your effect can either exist or not exist. And you would just line it up with the blade. And just create keyframes tracing the blade. Uh, if you want a more in-depth explanation for how I do this, uh, there's a link in the description for how I changed the lightsaber colors in episode two. That'll, uh, when I talk about Count Dooku's lightsaber, that's when I go more in depth into how I do this. Uh, anyway, so after the uh, blade is rotoed in the tint effect, I add this change to color, which uh, when you make hue, lightness, and saturation all 100% and softness 0%, you're essentially telling it take everything that has any color in it and make it blue. And so without the tint, this is what the scene looks like. Well, uh, sorry, without the tint and without the uh, other blade, this is what the scene looks like. So what that does is it takes the background that would be bleeding through the mask of the blade and it just makes it glow blue. And so it's only the blade that has color. For Vader's lightsaber, on the other hand, instead of cutting into the tint, I put color onto the tint. Doing literally the same effect with the tint, except instead of turning everything black and white and cutting a hole in it, I'm turning everything black into this red, so it would look like this. It's very, very muted here, but that gets fixed in this fast color corrector. Once you've uh, traced and masked the blade, always apply feather. That's something I kind of neglected to mention in the other video, but I uh, have it in the title. And so once the mask is done, just click Mask 1, Control C, and then you can uh, just click co Fast Color Corrector and Command and Control or Command V to paste the mask in there. I've already got it in there, so I'm not going to bother, but it's literally just an identical mask. And what this uh, Fast Color Corrector does is it just ups the saturation and makes it redder. For the clash lock effect, I actually just went to generate under uh, video effects and brought in a lens flare. Uh, the lens flare is, let me just, uh, I'll just get rid of the mask that I have here. Without the the lens flare is just your classic J.J. Abrams lens flare, but it moves like actual light shot through a camera, and so that's why it's so great to use. And so the first thing you do is you click the lens flare effect and move this point to uh, the clashing of the blades. You might want to bring the flare brightness down to zero just so you it's not in the way, but you can still see the point. If you just turn off the effect, you can't see the point. Of course, mess around with how bright you want it. And then just scroll through the video and, and move the flare center to uh, track where the blades are meeting. 
And then once that's done, you just click the circle, uh, create ellipse mask, and then you can just turn it into a circle. And with this, you don't really need to be too precise with following the flare, because it's light, it's very forgiving as long as you up your feather a lot. And uh, if it's too, if you find your circle is too small, uh, you can use this expansion command to make uh, your circle bigger. And so once it's done, you end up with this. And that's pretty much it. It's a pretty simple effect. It's just tedious. And especially when you get really long shots like this. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Uh, if you did, a like is appreciated. Subscriptions are also appreciated. Comments are appreciated. Just do something.